Hey, everybody. We should be live right now. Live right now. Here we go. So we're going to roll the intro right now, and then we're going to go in. We got a full pack show. Here we go. And we a lot of go on. So I hope everybody's got their notepads and questions and all that good stuff. So we're going to roll the intro, and then we're going to get into it as soon as the flag stops. Here we go. Please work. Captain over. Stay on target. We're too close. Stay on target. Conversation anyway. Okay, now that that is out of the way, we can not do that. We always have technical difficulties. Which one is it? There it is. Sweet. That's what I wanted. Hey, welcome into the show. Welcome to the program. Uh, we're going to talk about thumbnails and five things that will definitely help you improve getting clicked on. Like last week, we talked about SEOs and how that improves... You ranking your videos. I hope people did some of that stuff, and I hope it really, really, really helped you out. This week, we're going to talk about thumbnails, and thumbnails are super important. They're probably, uh, with content, they're right up there with everything else. A thumbnail is, in my opinion, like first, you only have one chance to make that first impression, and you got to make it a good one, right? Because if you don't, they're just not going to click on it, and they're going to go and hit the high road, and you're just not going to you're not going to get a view. So right now we have Aaron Jameson in here. We have RV Weekends. We'd like to welcome them in, um, and Papa Drew is here too as well. Um, <laughs> so that dude just kind of strange and odd. But let's go through the five things that we have. You don't need to see my ugly face, right? Here I am. We all know what I look like. Let's get into some screen sharing. And then at the end, uh, whoever's in here, we can do a uh, channel review for the last 15, 20 minutes and go through your channels and uh, check that stuff out and see how you're doing and maybe what you can improve in. Maybe we can bring you up on the program. Uh, we can talk about your channel and find out why you did a direction that way. But before we do all of that, get off topic and squirrel out, let's get back into the thumbnails. So here we go. We're going to go through the first one. And we're going to do a screen share. Get me off there. And we're going to come over here. And we are going to come over here and share the screen. There we go. So the first one was we want to tease, right? We want to be a tease when we are doing our thumbnails. We want to tease our audience. What is that thumbnail all about? Why am I intrigued to want to click on that, right? When we're dating and stuff, we like to tease the other person, kind of play with the other person. It gets their interest up. It piques their interest and say, you know what? I really want to know more about that thumbnail. I've got to figure out what's going on. It's piqued my interest. It's teasing me a little bit. I need to know more. And that's what a thumbnail really should do. It should just really just grab your attention, not let go, and want to suck you into it and uh, bring you into that video hopefully the content's really good uh, it doesn't do any good to have a great thumbnail and your content absolutely suck because you're going to suck somebody in and they're going to go what in the hell did i just click on and leave um and there's ways to tell about that too as a matter of fact you will tell you about that and I'll, i can teach you how to read that analytic uh okay so let's go on to the next one the next one in my opinion is 
make sure it's sharing it before we go over. Does anybody have any questions about the teas? Both of you that are in here, all two super fans um, that are here. Anybody have any questions about the teasing going on? Do I have to screen share this whole, every single one of these? Wow. Let's go stream hard. Open a new question. Okay. All right, so we, I guess we gotta, we gotta share every single one manually. So we'll wait. I'm watching on RV or on my uh, Papa Drew screen. So, how do you tease YouTube, uh, YouTube video? How is it supposed to be? How do you tease the YouTube video? Well, you could tease somebody a bunch of different ways, Aaron. You could put um, the key warm as your. Um, as a description of your video, and then show your car on fire with you standing next to it with your hands out. That would tease me on why did you set your car on fire to stay warm? That could be a tease, right? Or um, like what I'm going to do, I have a thumbnail already made, right? I've already made my thumbnail and I've shot my video for Wednesday. But the thumbnail is going to come up, and it's I have two of them right now that I'm testing with people. One says, warning. The other one says, I told you so. Kind of makes you like, why does Drew have a, a, a thumbnail that says, warning? What is that all about? And I, I told you so? What did you tell me? So that leads me into the next part, which is open-ended questions. What? It's like stealing cake. Absolutely. What is an open-ended question? And we went into the almighty Wikipedia because we know nobody manipulates Wikipedia. Everything that Wikipedia tells you is 100% true. Trust me. If it's on the internet, it's 100%. <laughs> Stealing of all Papa Drew's cakes. So an open-ended question that cannot be answered with a yes or a no. It's kind of like a tease, right? It's an open-ended question. And it's all of the stuff that CNN does is an open-ended question because we all know about that. So, right, Aaron. <laughs> so it's an open-ended question. You can't give a yes or no answer. It's going to want to leave you asking the question, what in the heck is this thumbnail all about? Why in the world do I want to click on this? And what is he trying to tell me? Quick question. Do thumbnails need to have verbiage in them? Or can they just be a picture? Or does it matter? Do th some thumbnails work better just as a picture? Or do some thumbnails work better with verbiage? And the next question is for marketing. Should all of your thumbnails follow and be like every other thumbnail? Let me know in the chat. So now we have open-ended question, right? So we got to tease. We want to tease the people to get them to look at your thumbnail. Then we're going to make your thumbnail like an open-ended question. What is going on with that? I need to click on that thumbnail, right? I need to find out more. And that's going to get your CTR up, your click-through rate. This is going to help your CTR and your SEOs, right? This is all tied in together. And when you get this boogie in and you get this right, you are absolutely going to grow your channel with not only subscribers, but views, and you're going to grow your bank account once you get monetized. This is the secret to that stuff. This is the secret sauce. Yeah, let's go over to the next one. Let's talk about this. This is always a cool thing to talk about. This is marketing. What are the 10 colors, right, that increase your eyes? What draws your eyes to those thumbnails? Here are the 10 colors. I don't know if anybody's done any research on this stuff, but when you're doing your thumbnails and you're building your thumbnails, you'll notice a lot of them have these colors, yellows, greens, purples, golds, oranges. Why? Reds. 
Why do they have that? It's to catch your eye for marketing, right? We're going to tease you with some of the colors like this with open-ended questions. The thumbnail, it, it, it can sell your whole video or it can break your whole video right from your thumbnail. That's why all of this is really important to just nail right off the bat. If you put in... Uh, put in a much time into their thumbnails as they do into their videos, they would have so many more viewers. I totally agree with that sentence is hundred percent true. When I'm doing a thumbnail or, and I'm doing a video and I guarantee when Aaron is doing one, cause I've been to his site and I've looked at his, I've done channel review on Aaron. When he's doing a video and I'm doing a video and Aaron, stop me if I'm wrong, he'll put a week of just thought into a thumbnail. Like I will. I want to do a thumbnail on this particular product. How can I stage it? What am I going to do for verbiage? How am I going to tease it? What angle am I going to shoot this particular thing at? It, it, there's a lot that goes into it. When I, when I do my verbiage, how am I going to do an open-ended question? I've got my video concept that I want to do, right? I've written out my storyboard or my storyline. Um, if you do that and I know that I want to talk about a widget, but how do I make that widget pop on a thumbnail? How do I get and convey when somebody's just going through on a TV set or an iPad or even an iPhone or, or, or whatever, and they see that thumbnail and they go, you know what? I need to click on that. That picture is really compelling. And that's what this is really about. What would Papa Drew do? I, like I said, Aaron, I, I do about a week. It takes me a week to figure out at least what the thumbnail is. And then I, I actually bounce off ideas off of other creators on titles and stuff for thumbnails a lot of the times. Or I'll use my person that's a lot smarter in this house called a wife. And she's a hell of a lot smarter than I am. But anyway, this is, this is something I would take a screenshot of this or do some Google research. But there is a lot of colors that you can put into your thumbnails. I use a lot of the oranges, the blacks, the blues, the greens, um, some of the reds in my, in my thumbnails. Um, for the wordage, I use um, orange and black. And I might highlight it with a little bit of blue behind it or a little bit of red just to make it pop. Oh, if you were blue, you would share a link or two. If I, well, my kids weren't watching Harry Potter in the back bedroom, I would make you blue. And I already made you blue. Oh, you're on blue on Papa Drew. Okay, I got gotcha. you. If I had the iPad, I could go over and make you blue. Um, the next thing that you should do, which really... Um, Here it is. I hope this is helping everybody out. The next thing you need to do is when you're making your thumbnails, don't use clickbait. Don't do it. You might get that great click. You will. You'll get a click on it. You'll probably get a comp down below of why did you put, you know, how to make a nuclear-powered race car when you're building a car in Jamaica because that's how Jamaicans get a bobsled team that go to the Olympics, which was a great movie. Go watch Cool Runnings. Awesome. But don't do clickbait. If you're talking about a review and there's something in the review that possibly could be bad, yeah, you could put warning up there or I told you so because you're doing a review, right? If you're doing a review, I told you so, that might be a great title because I told you so. It was in the video. Did you watch it? I told you so. What do you mean I told you so? What are you talking about, Drew? God, I got to watch this damn 10-minute video now. Yeah, if you want to know what I told you so. Or you want to know what the warning is. But those aren't clickbaits, right? Know your audience and be honest. Have a thumbnail that represents. Tease them, 
right? Open-ended questions if you're going to use words or pictures, and we'll show you some stuff. You can use Google to generate in the titles of your thumbnails. You can use um, keywords in your thumbnail titles if you wanted to, to help you out with some keyword stuff. But remember, these are pictures, so I don't know how well that's going to pick up on that. Um, there's a lot that goes into this, but the one thing is you want to be honest. Don't make a picture, like for me, bringing a beautiful woman in the star-spangled bikini standing next to me, and then when you click on it, you get Papa Drew smiling at you. Probably not going to work out very well. Matter of fact, I know it's not going to work out very well. And if you do it with cake, I'm going to be really upset. So, like, if you make a chocolate cake and then when I click on the thumbnail and it's carrot cake, we're going to have words in the descriptions below. Just saying, I love both of them. I don't discriminate, but I'm just saying. If it's a chocolate cake thumbnail, please, one, make it open-ended. So, hmm, is it any good? Chocolate cake. We bought it at Costco. Does it suck? And then a picture of a chocolate cake, right? A high resolution picture. That's an honest thumbnail. I would probably click on that. And then if I saw a carrot cake that was consumed last night at somebody's RV, I would probably be like, what the hell? Just saying. So, yeah, there we go. All right, moving on to the next one. Is anybody finding this like helpful or is this stuff everybody knows and you're just like whatever drew or is this like helping people out because i'm really trying to help people out and by the way if you could share this on your social media platforms that'd really be freaking cool i would appreciate that get this little channel up and running here all right so the next one is know your audience. Who are you marketing to? A lot of the times YouTubers or creators, especially when they're starting out, they're making content that they want to watch. I make them feel good. I'm going to make content that I want to watch. I want to make content for me. And then if you want to watch it, awesome. You need to think if you want to be a successful YouTuber, you need... um. You need to think about content that somebody else wants to watch and yourself, right? So you want to make content that Joe Blow sitting over there in La La Land somewhere, he might or she might find interesting. And you can do that and get that click through with some of the stuff I'm showing you here on the thumbnails, right? With being honest with your audience, knowing who your audience is, right? If you're a uh, uh, RC gaming car channel and you're doing nothing but RC uh, cars, right? You're not going to put a hammer and a whiteboard and a saw for building homes on your thumbnail. That won't make any sense. People will get very confused. You'll probably get very little click throughs on that. And it'll be like, wow, what do I do with that? The other thing too, is what Aaron's talking about is evergreen content. Evergreen content is content like what I do or a lot of other YouTubers do when you do a review of an RV park. That RV park, unless it's gone out of business, will be evergreen content forever. You will get clicks on that as long as you have a really good thumbnail, right, that's drawing people in. Wow, this thumbnail is engaging. The colors are popping. It makes me, it's drawing my eyes to this specific tree with oranges on it, right? Um, but not in California because Traveling Robert can't get the oranges out of the tree. Go watch his video. You'll love it. But anyway, um, something like that. And then oranges free in California or trouble at the orange tree. What trouble? I don't know. How can you have trouble at an orange tree? That probably would one make me click on it because what what what's going on, right? So know your audience, know what you're going to make your thumbnails when you're getting ready to write your, your um, storyboards or your idea 
know what thumbnail you're going to want to make. The other thing that's really great, Wayward Wags has talked about it, um, is YouTube will pick out a certain amount of thumbnails for you. You can use those or you can modify them just a little bit and they will help you with your browse feature. Now, browse feature and suggested, we'll get into that later on in another class, but it does relate to your thumbnails. So just we'll get into that later on because that's a whole other can of worms. All right. So know your audience who you're marketing to. Who are you selling your channel to? Selling your video to, your ideas, your funness to, right? Let's go into one of my, we're going to go to me. I'm going to pick on myself. So what I've done, if you look at my old videos, we'll go back to the oldest. There's one of my, there's my very first video I ever did on YouTube as Papa Drew's RV. It's Art and Ryan versus exotic cars. Great tagline. Thumbnail is just a picture of a racetrack. I think I had two subscribers at the time I put that up, right? That's one of my very first thumbnails. It was my very first videos. That and then uh, I waited a couple years and put up a Marine Corps video, my dad's birthday. Then I started saying, hey, you know, some of these are pretty cool. Let me start putting up thumbnails. The problem is, is there's no consistency in these thumbnails, these older thumbnails. You don't know what's going on by looking at the thumbnail. You can kind of tell by the birthday, right? That's my dad's birthday. We don't know why he's dressed up like a pirate. Are This is a horrible picture. It's sideways. It's kind of intriguing. And this is inside of my RV. That's a horrible shot of my, I should have taken a picture. These are really bad thumbnails. But if you go, To my most recent, you're going to see something that changed here a lot. Notice anything that changed? There's a ton of marketing now. The font is the same. The, the little triangle right here is the same. The Papa Drew logo is the same throughout all of my thumbnails. I'm using orange as my um, background to catch your eye, and then a great high-resolution picture that I really don't explain. It's one or two words in my thumbnails. The dog jumping into the water right here just says training. What's the dog training for? I don't know. It says Great Dane versus water part two. What does that even mean? I need to click on it to watch, right? This one, dock diving, right? The dog's diving in. Now, when you're doing your thumbnails, you also want to remember that down here in this bottom, there's a timestamp down there. You want to stay away from that timestamp. So anything that you're doing, make sure you put no wordage down there. Look, I've made a mistake right here. When I was doing the Quartzsite family reunion, I covered it up. Some of the, on the white down there, right? Too many words on the thumbnail. It also confuses people. You're correct, Aaron. So another way, less is more. The less you have, the simpler it is, the more likely you're going to get that click. Big words on the thumbnail because you got to remember a lot of these people are, you, are they're watching your videos from a cell phone, maybe at work. So if you have 400 words and people have to try and figure out what your thumbnail is about, they're probably going to move on to the next thumbnail. But if you can put something together that has very few words that are big, easy for people to read, eye-catching, you're probably going to get that click. You're going to get that chance to make that first impression. Right? Right? 
does anybody have any questions about any of this coming down? You're going to see, look, all my choices, big words. Aaron, it's Aaron and I from the Traveling Pisces together. We did a collaboration. Fonts. If you look at my fonts, all my fonts are the same right now. I'm going to start changing up my fonts for the winter series. So I'm going to change the way this font is, but it's still going to be orange. It's still going to be big block letters like this. It's just, I'm going to do a see-through shadow kind of fonts. We're going to do more solid fonts. But if you look, all my fonts are the same. Philly cheesesteak, our very first cook. Now, here's another thing. If you look at my thumbnail, let's take choices real quick. Choices. Look at what the thumbnail is versus what the title is. The thumbnail is completely different than the title. Why did I do that? Because I wanted two chances for somebody to click on that thumbnail, right? If you look at my big one, my five, my five thousand, my fifty-seven thousand view live stream, which was ridiculous. It says protest downtown Long Beach. Simple, a ton of people. People clicked on that like it was going out of style because they saw what was going on. the The header, the font was easy to read, big enough, and it was a simple, quick thumbnail. I threw that together in two seconds on a live feed on my patio. Do you recommend going back and changing your tail all line up with your, yes. So here's the, here's the deal, Seal. If your video is dead and it is not doing anything anymore, so you go in your analytics, nobody's watching your video, nobody's seeing your video, it's just a dead video. You have nothing to lose by changing the thumbnail. Don't change the title of the video. Leave that alone. But you can go back in and change the thumbnail. I I actually, three hours into a video release, and it was this video right here. This dock diving video right there. Three hours into that video, I changed the thumbnail. The video was getting one or two views after the first two, two hours of being uh, aired. And it wasn't getting any views at all. And I was like, what's going on? So I went and I said, you know what? If I'm not getting views, I'm not getting views. To heck with it. Let's change the thumbnail, repost it, and put it out on a couple other social media platforms. And I'll, we're going to go over that's a whole other show too. And all of a sudden, it started taking off and I started getting views. Not a lot of views, but 152 views in a week. Okay, I'll take it. You know, it is what it is. Four days ago, 149 views. I mean, the dog videos are doing all right. It's just a lot of them. Like I said, I'm going to take your advice, uh, RV Weekends, and, and break it up. Google best color palettes for thumbnails. Yeah, we did that. We went over the marketing, Aaron, on that, and I showed it. You'd go back into the, uh, the stream and play that. So this is what's going on with thumbnails. If you go back now into my channel, and there's a lot of videos you're going to start seeing consistency in my thumbnails. So now anytime you see one of my thumbnails off my other channel, you're going to know that's a Papa Drew's video. We're not going to watch that because that dude sucks. No, you probably hopefully watch it because they're not that bad. Um, but you'll know that they're there and you'll know that, hey, Drew made that video and stuff. I struggle with colors with how light our logo is. Yeah, so that's that's part of the problem too. So there's a trick around that. If you look at my latest video, say the training video right here, if you look at the top, you'll notice that I have a black opaque screen that goes across the top. Remember, you're going to use one to five word in there. Less is more. You're going to make those as big as possible. So I just set up my template. This is a template. All I do is I drop in the picture. I resize the picture. I save. I open it up into another program. 
and I type in the words, save it, and then upload it into, into uh, YouTube. But I make it so the background of where I'm going to put my wordage is dark. Then I can put a shadow in behind the words to make those even dark, darker so they pop. So it draws to training or dock diving or Great Dane or Great Dane swimming, right? Great Danes, Great Dane swimming, which is even spelled wrong, which got a thousand views three weeks ago. Or simple keto, so easy, right? That all has a back black background that's opaque, which is see-through that I can put my letters on there that doesn't really obstruct the picture behind it, but it makes that wordage pop out. So let's go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot up a guest thing, Aaron, and, and there's only a couple of you in here. We only have uh, like three people in here, which is fine. I don't really care how many people's, if I can help one or two people, I'm absolutely for it. And that's fine with me. Uh, let's see, invite, clipboard, copy to clipboard, and paste, and chat. If you guys want to come on up, come on up, and we can go and check out your videos. We'll drop the voicemail thing. Turn off the banner for that. We'll make you guys big. Then we can go look at your channel, and Aaron's really good. Oh, wow. I forgot to turn off the uh, all the stuff. As you can see, I'm uh, broadcasting um, right now through my webcam, or through my DSLR. And this is through the Mac. So we'll do that, and we'll stop broadcasting through this. If you guys want to um, come on up, come on up, up, Aaron. Click on it. Oh, I didn't even see you asking to turn it off. That's all right. Come on up, and we'll go through stuff. Oh, you got family there? Okay, that's fine. We will. Share screen. Oh, I got to open up a new tab. Oh, wow. Hey, hang on. Don't get goofy on me. Don't get goofy. Hang on for a quick second. You're leaving here in two weeks. Somebody just popped in. Hello. Let's take a look at Aaron. Let's see what Aaron has to say. Let's go look at his videos. Aaron is really good about his thumbnails. I will say that. He, he doesn't have consistency on his thumbnails, though, Aaron. You noticed that, right? Hello, Aaron, are you there? Okay. As long as you know you don't have consistency, but, you know, <laughs> I see you have 10,000 subscribers. So... But, like, mine I have consistent. So when you see mine, you know it's a Papa Drew video. But look down. Look down at what? No, I know. I look at the views. I get it. I, I totally understand it. You have totally brought your channel to market, man. I get I totally get it. 
Except for the uh, Halo View one, which got 300 views. What happened there? The one question I have for you, Aaron, that I want to get with you behind the scenes is where do you do your closed caption? Because that's pretty cool. Yeah, I was looking at that. And I'm doing closed captioning as well or starting to do it. And it's I'm not figuring an easy way to do that. And I like the closed captioning. The other thing is um, the timestamps on the videos. Yeah. I know it's in YouTube, brother. It's There's just no easy way of... I haven't figured out an easy way of doing it. So, I don't know. Let's I'm get starting started. with the timestamps. Yeah, the timestamps are huge. I I was telling people to start doing timestamps months ago. What, Oscar? What? Hey, Robert. He's eating a popsicle. Is he? <laughs> Robert, you got to you got to share with others, Robert. <laughs> what did he say? He said hi. Who's he? <laughs> oh, Papa Drew. Oh. He's doing a thumbnail. What's up, brother? Oh. He can't hear you. I got. Oh, headset's on. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're on your site. So look at the, I just did a thumbnail for next Sunday. Okay. No, I have not done any of the timestamps on it yet. And I haven't went in there and played with any of the tagging. It's the RV must haves. I like, I, yeah, I noticed this one. Um, Cause it's been up for a while. So let's just click on it. Will it come up? It should come up with a thumbnail, right? It's a premiere. It should. They're watching Harry Potter in the back. There we go. I like it. It's got your face, your eyes. So you're going to make that eye contact. It's dark up at the top. Is that opaque or is that just dark? That's it's just dark. solid. Okay. Oh, whoops. That's funny. Why did it do that? Someone you've blocked is in there. Is in here. That's funny. Yeah. Who's in there? Okay. I like the... Oh, because it's going to the chat. Ah. Uh, Come on, dude. All right. We're just going to do it this way. I like the black. Mm -hmm. I like the red, the splatter. Premiere is cool. You know a timestamp's going to go right there. Yeah. It's kind of empty space right here. Yeah, I thought I moved it up. But I didn't. I, See, like I have because of the logo. I have to. I have to back it with white. Oh, because I get if it. not, okay. you wouldn't be able to see it. If I move that over the red, you wouldn't be able to see our logo. Gotcha. Because I like this this corner right here. I'm a big fan of the corners. Like I like this. the corner too. So I'm trying to figure out what to do. Uh, this to me is like a wasted space because you're cutting off the picture. But mm -hmm. this. Is really cool. And you have consistency. This is consistent with this, with this, with this, with this. It's consistent. Um, I noticed you changed it. You had it, or whoever's making these thumbnails, had it for a little bit down uh, here. So mm -hmm. this started getting really consistent. This did, this did, this did. I look for patterns and consistency in these and we stopped doing that one because somebody told us it was too many pictures and it was busy and nobody would see it it is it's it but it's consistent yeah right so that that's a good thing because now i can tell if, if i see that i know it's going to be you it's going to be like a lot of information there like information overload but it, i know it's going to be you but if you come back up to 
like th- like I really like this is simple. Mm-hmm. Thursday night live. It's just simple. It's big. It's live, which is huge. It's right in the middle. It's got your your faces on it, and it's got a corner card. Simple, perfect. Less is more. It's an awesome, and that blue pops. Yeah. Right. I like the blue and the green. Yeah, this is good too. This pops. It's that multicolor weird thing, but it's consistent. It's got the corner cards. So there's a program that I use, which is, I find it really, 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 really cool. And it is called Pixel Matters. And it's cheap. And there's my, there's my template for my Papa Drew stuff. See how it's all, and then where the white is, Mm -hmm. I just drop in a picture. Okay. And the top where it's black, that's always consistent, always the same. That's where I put my text. So I know when I'm doing this stuff, how to like, what, what am I doing? You know what I'm saying? I, I, I have a template to work with. And it's always going to be the same. The other program that I use, Typerama. Why? Because you can see all my thumbnails in there. Look at all of them. Some of those didn't even make the light of day. <laughs> but it's always consistent. Yeah. Then then what I've used. Then, then you know what I'm saying? It's always the same. Like, here's my chicken that I just cooked. I can make a thumbnail out of that in about two seconds. It's yeah. just how easy it is. Um, I highly recommend both of those. Both of those. And then the other one I've been using, you guys are, are you guys using iMovie? Yes, I am. He uses um, Final Cut Pro. Okay. So for iMovie, I don't know if you're using uh, green screens and stuff. No. Oh, there's Aaron. Let's add him to the stream. Hey, Aaron, how you doing? Can you hear me? Hey, Aaron. Hello. Trying to find it. It is like the most amazing freaking program. I just got it, and it's 100% free. And you, this is how I make all my, if you watch one of my videos, you'll see my subscribe stuff. It comes from here. And I can't find it. I'll have to do it. I could do a whole tutorial on just on that for this channel. Aaron, so what do you got going on, man? What do you, oh, there it is. It's called Spark, Adobe Spark. And this program is absolutely awesome. I will go ahead and make a um I will go ahead and make let's see if I can get into it. A whole yep, here it is. Like this didn't make the time of day. This didn't make air. But I can go ahead and make a whole green screen on this. And then what I do is I send it over to my computer with iMovie. I can cut it up. And then I can show you how to manipulate this and move it all around the screen to make it anywhere it pops up and then animate it. That's cool. I know nothing how to do any of that. I can te- I'm going to teach all of this, all different classes. Yeah, I don't know how to do any of that. So anyway, back to this. I want to. I Aaron, is Aaron talking? Because we can't hear you. One of the ones that I use, I had mine muted. Sorry. There you go. That I recommend for snap for taking for doing thumbnails is Snappa, and that's an online freebie. You can do uh, three thumbnails a month and for free. I mean, it's and it's really easy to use. Another one that I recommend is uh, Remove Background Images. It's fr- or Remove.bg, and it will take 
your picture and it'll remove the background and then you can add highlights to your picture. That's how I get the little blue highlights on all of my stuff that I was I, wondering about I that reviews and it's really easy to use. You upload it, it download it, you put it in there and you can take the original picture, put yourself over the top of it and add a, a halo effect to it. What is that one called? Remove.bg. Oh, now, if Thank Papa you. Drew wants to share the screen, I can show you how to use it. I mean, it's really easy yeah. and quick. Go share your screen or share what screen? My screen. Uh, this should be your screen right here. Uh, Chrome tab. <clears throat> First, I got to get to it here. I guess I'll... Hey, Sue. Do this, and then I'll share it. Hey, Sue. How you doing? I have a... Remove background. All right, now I can share. Chrome tab. This one. Anything I was saying earlier today make sense to anybody? Did it help them out? Oh, absolutely. Okay. And I think I knew a lot of what you're saying, but it's. Well, it's. I'm just not practicing at all. It's like you asked 50 people how to do something, you're going to get 50 different responses. The same thing with thumbnails. Everybody, until you find your groove on how to do it, mm -hmm. it, it it's it's hard to explain to somebody else on how to make them. Right. I, I found the easiest way to make thumbnails is for me is to make a template. Then I know that I'm consistent. Every It's like, it, look, Every time I want to bake a cake, if I use the same ingredients and do it exactly the same way, I know that cake is going to come out delicious every single time. If I make a template and I put a picture in there, I know my thumbnails are going to come out consistent every single time. Well, see, and I do it all backwards. I do the thumbnail first, then I do the research for the tags, and then I actually make the video. That's how I'm doing it. You are backwards. That, hmm? That's Why how you're thumb backwards. That's because most people shoot the video, people. most people shoot the video. They don't do any research for tags. They put up a a real quick, here you go thumbnail, and then wonder why it doesn't do any good. That's this what was I was saying earlier. Yeah. Thumbnails, yeah. tags, those are the two most important key ingredients to YouTube. When you're mm -hmm. doing a video, when you have an idea or a concept you want to do, I will do research on that concept that I'm going to shoot for at least a week, running all the SEOs, trying to get the great, the best title I can get, <clears throat> trying to figure out what's going to click. Then I'm trying to figure out how to shoot that thumbnail, what that thumbnail is going to kind of look like in my head. And then once I have all of that, then I will go ahead and shoot the video. Now, see, we do ours different because most of our videos are travel. You can still do a travel video like that. So we're not, we're not out to try to like show somebody or teach a concept. It's yeah, you don't have to, but if you're going to um, Disneyland and you type in Disneyland into YouTube, how many hits are there? There's over a million of them. How okay. are you going to compete with those other million channels doing the same video? Your thumbnails and your keyword research. Mm -hmm. That's how you compete with them. Let's I do that and I do that after after the fact. Listen, I do it. I don't before. even see, I'm also not editing, so I don't see the video oh. until the video is done. No, but you got pictures you can take from the video to make the thumbnail with. I do. So when you're doing so the, the, to just to help you out, and, and again, everybody, every creator is gonna be different. There's no wrong or right way of special thought. But the creators that I know that are very successful and they're actually getting ahead and getting traction in some of this stuff, when they're doing a travel video or a how-to video or whatever, they're going to say, okay, look, we are gonna we know that we're driving from point A to point B. We know that in point A, we're already here and we can do a little bit of shooting and let's get some good B-roll footage or whatever we're going to do, right? So that's part of the storyboard because you're starting off at a place. And then when we get into the car, we're going to drive down this road. And these are maybe some of the things we're going to see, or maybe there's some quirky stuff we can pull off the road and try and get or whatever, or something like that. Right. So we're that there's part of the storyboard. 
Then when we get into the RV park, we know we're at the RV park we're going to do. These are some of the things I want to shoot. I've done some research on the RV park. I know that that the entrance of the RV park, they have a big sign that looks really cool. They got a train that's sitting over the left of the RV park. They got a really neat pool that I want to get the drone up. And I know that the spaces are pretty well manicured. I want to get all shots of that as I come into the RV park. And that's your storyboard. You can plan all of that. And then now that you know that that's kind of like your shot scene or sort of your shot scene, you can get your thumbnail to be kind of part of that, right? Mm -hmm. So my thumbnail might be the front of that place that we're going to that's thousand trails with the train set and stuff. You know, there's, there's my thumbnail. I want to get that video and shoot that as my thumbnail and make that pop. And then my SEOs are going to talk about the, the park that I'm going to. I'm going to do all the research on that park and all the SEOs. I'm going to do research on the road that I took, Route 66. I'm going to do research and SEOs on Route 66. I'm going to do research of where I've been and do SEOs on the park that I'm at. Maybe I find something weird like the biggest chicken in the world is on the side of the road. I'm going to do SEOs and do research on that. All of that goes into planning before I even pick up a video camera and start filming. And I don't know if Aaron's the same way, but that's how I do it. Depends on what we're talking about. Travel videos are harder to do that with because you don't, sometimes it's the spear of the moment. I stop and boom, we're going to do something and I shoot a video. Right. So I don't have a time to work on it backwards. But when I'm doing my how-to stuff, it's all backwards. Because normal people shoot it, do the thumbnail, like I said, yeah. last. But... Like I said before, if you spent as much time as you do editing and shooting the video as you do working on your thumbnail, you'd be surprised on how much how much that changes things. That, if you opinion. haven't subscribed, all four of you, please subscribe. I did a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> when you first started it. Yeah, this is so funny. It's been um, a while. This is this is like I, I like I dig this because it's a very very intimate class, you know. Um, what else can we talk about? I mean, Aaron, go I ahead. And gonna, talk. I was going to share that screen so you could see how to use that, but yeah, you didn't accept it down below. What I didn't see it. Do it again. It's there now. Oh, oh, I didn't. See, okay, cool. See it. There you go. Yep. Got so it. that's my screen, and. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> so all you do is go to this. That's the URL is remove background. You take a picture or an image. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm sure you don't want to see my drone stuff. We'll go to my desktop, which is a mess. We'll take a photo of... That's the one I did for that. I wasn't prepared for all this because nobody sent me a text. I don't know why. Just... We'll take this one, this picture of my wife and I. I don't and have I'll any of y'all's number, so I can't text anybody. So I took a picture of my wife and I, and it'll show it. Aww. It was the original. There's the original picture. And then it took all, all the background. And it's that easy. There's no more trying to figure out how to go around and cut it and copy and all this other weird stuff. You just upload it, and you can download it to wherever you want to. You can take the original picture. Put it in there, and you can put another picture behind it. Put this one right over the top, blur it out, and then you can add the little ghosty thing around the outside of it so it's got a color that makes it pop. It's that easy. Well, how do you add the little ghosty thing around it? Depends on what you're using for a software. I can show you how to do it in... I've got an old version of... Oh, what is it? <laughs> uh, Adobe Photoshop that I use. And that's how I make my thumbnails. Everybody does it different. Okay. I've been using Canva, and I can do the background remover. Um, Pixel Matters. I can cut everything out manually, and I've done that on Pixel Matters. You zoom in, and you take a little and draw. And yeah, it'll cut. This is so much easier. That seems a so, lot easier. How many yeah. can you do though? Is it all free hundred percent? It's all free one hundred percent. If you and it's but it's in lower grade um pixelation. If you want to the higher res picture to come down, you gotta pay for the subscription. It's like ten dollars a month. Okay. But it's ten dollars I'm not gonna spend when I can just all I want to do is remove the background and I can 
I can play with the the picture or that frame and make it brighter or take the right. pixelation out of it. Hmm. It's perfect. So yeah. That's one of the ones I like to share because that's to me that's really helpful. Half the time I was sitting there drawing all the way around it, taking all the stuff out, and that just saved me like 15, 20 minutes worth of time. Yeah, I just yeah, did one. It's pretty cool. That's what I do on um but then again, I don't really, I don't do a lot of the back where I'm taking the background out and putting something in because I'm taking high res photos of like the dog jumping or whatever right now, or of the, the smoker that I'm going to do the review on. But to I'm be honest, high, when, you, when you're looking at a picture that's only this big on the screen, it you're not going to notice the difference between a 4K picture and a 720p picture. You're not going to notice it because right. what's going to catch your eye is going to be the wording and what, right. what the picture is. I mean, it's you're not going to notice that difference. And how you lay the picture out. Because yep. sometimes the pictures will do the talking for you. Sometimes you don't even need words. Yeah, I did the remove the background on the for our thumbnail from last week. And put us in there. The one you, and you said it was you like that thumbnail. Because you can do that with product images. You can take the background out. And you can just put it by itself. You can do the same thing with uh, uh, an RV park sign. And it, just the picture of it. And you can manipulate it. And, and put yourself in it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so many different things you can do with it that adds to the storytelling of the picture, your title picture, which is your thumbnail. So a thumbnail can almost be its own vlog by okay. itself. Mm -hmm. Well, pictures worth a thousand words, and you yeah, wanted to say a thousand right. words without saying anything. It's your introduction to your video. It's your and that's it's why your greeting. Right. And that's why I recommend three to five words only on a thumbnail because you put anything else on there, and and it's this big, and you can't see it, or it's in some funky font, and you can't read it. The font is, is a big one. I've noticed with some simple. People. Yeah. Simple and easy. If you're using font that nobody can read, they're not going to click on your thumbnail. Yeah, the bigger the bigger the font, the bolder it is, the better it'll be used. Yep. Well, some people are looking on their phone and they can't see it. Yeah. And that's why I take it and I make it as small as I can and see if I can still read it. If I can still read it, then it's a good thumbnail. Because it catches your eye even when it's that big. Yep. And see, I try and I try and touch the borders. The top border and the bottom border of that black bar on the top of my template and i know if i touch the borders that that's going to be big enough automatically to be seen on the phone mm -hmm. it's kind of a you do this you're good to go thunderstorm awesome so next week um what does everybody want me to go over or do you want me to pick something what's that what what are people having problems with because this is about helping everybody here. Keyword search. You want to do keyword search? We kind of did that with SEOs last week, but we can. We did, well, did there's you so many that? different ways of doing it. Uh, do either of you have uh, TubeBuddy? Yeah, mm -hmm. I use TubeBuddy, absolutely. I use TubeBuddy. I use TubeBuddy and, and vidIQ together. I did a whole video last week <clears> on <throat> SEOs and how to rank your video in the top 10. <laughs> Because what I usually do is do an Excel document on the SEOs and what their scores are, and then I can sort it out, and then I can see what the top the top ones that I need to add to that to go in there. For, I could use going over that again because after doing it again this week, yeah. I do have some more questions about it. Okay, we could do another SEO. Using, class. I was using oh. the buddy and the bid IQ. Darren, do you want to team up together and do a big SEO sure. class next week? Sure. At five o'clock, we could do that. Five o'clock your time? <laughs> yeah. yeah, just like we're doing right now. No, I'm a little you late. Need to, you need to you need to start moving west. Nope, I'm going the other direction. Sorry, you buddy. Going to, are you going to Tampa this year? East. I'm going to Florida. So we'll be within an hour and a half of Tampa. So I will. I'm trying to convince somebody that we need to go to the RV show. You need yeah. to go to the RV show. We'll be there. The Tampa Tampa RV show. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm and trying Florida's to stay stay free right now. So everything where, where should be at? go. Where you guys at right we now? We are we're on the east coast. Where? So Titusville area. 
where the where the rockets launch. Oh, oh, Cocoa oh, Beach. oh! Keep Canaveral type area. Yeah. Okay. We we're walk, gonna be we down in Fort rockets. Myers. Yeah. We're gonna be down in Fort Myers on the twentieth of next month. Oh, you're gonna be down there with Wayward Wags. I would and, connect with Dustin and Leslie. Uh, Steve, um, uh, Avengers. He's okay. Be down there too. RV Avengers. Yeah. So we have yep. to have to all do a meetup. <laughs> we're gonna have to. Are you guys? You guys aren't doing Mega area, yeah? Um, I'm gonna be in route, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to swing it over there or not. Depends Eventually. on what. See, I don't even know what my schedule is for next month. I don't know when we're leaving. All I know is we got to be down to Florida on the twentieth. Did you hear the Pisces got a great work camping gig, man? Up in uh, Washington, Oregon area. Uh, I'm not going back there. Thank you. Okay. I was out in Seattle for the last twelve years. I'm done. Something about going to work with two million people and coming home with four. I just thank you. No. <laughs> I don't know. They got a great mountain work camping gig up there where they got boats and they're allowed to use them and all I have to do is pay the fuel for the boat. And I'll go down to Fort Myer and deal with all the retirees at the at the beach. Thanks. The retired old people. <laughs> the retired old people. <laughs> and play pickleball, so which I have no idea you what You got it lucky is. dog down here too, so Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, there's He's quite down. a bit of us. Yeah, and then there's us that are on the West Coast doing our own thing over here. Someday we'll get you guys on our way. One day. We'll get you over to the West Coast. You gotta do the you gotta do the desert at least once. Oh, it's on our list. There's something about the desert that's just magical. It's on the list. Something about, something about being at a beach in at in Florida at Christmas time when you're used <laughs> to twenty below zero weather. I'll take that. It's so. a pretty awesome feeling. Because Iowa sucks in the wintertime. Sorry. So, yeah. All right. So we're at an hour. Um, RV weekends. Do you want to plug what you got coming up? Um, Got a couple lives this week. Okay. Got a video getting posted next Sunday. It's already up. Sweet. And I'm usually on her lives. Yep. I mean, almost a regular supporter over there, too. <laughs> and then I've got one... What am I doing? Um, we did the uh, install of the uh, bug guards, and I didn't like the little springy things that were in there, so I shot another video of how to uh, use one of those wire bend. You know the wire. Uh, yeah, just like we used to use in the military, and that's how I attached them to the side of the RV. So those things are not coming off at 150 miles an hour. <laughs> I guarantee it. Safety wire. Safety wire that thing down. Hell yeah. <laughs> and that's what I did. They're not coming off. That's awesome. And then Papa Drew, I got a review on a smoker. Does Imagine it suck? Yay. Does it not suck? Let's find out on Wednesday. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do that video instead of a dog jumping into the water video on Wednesday. I'm gonna give the dog a break. Uh, and I don't think she's gonna go to class next Saturday. Her ears bleeding really bad. Aww. So when she shakes her head, Great Danes have a little they get a little cut on the bottom of their ears. And um, the t it's really hard for them to heal those. They usually have to, like, strap your ear to the top of your head, and hopefully they stay there. She's got that problem, and she's bleeding, like, profusely. It's blood's on the ceiling, the walls, the, dog, the windows. If the dog needs it, then then Papa needs it. I want to see you strap your ears to your head. Right. <laughs> I'm about ready. I'm wearing, I'm wearing a hat. I'm about to man bun this thing up, dude. I haven't had a haircut in four months. Um, yeah, man bun it. I am. I'm gonna yeah. I haven't had a haircut in four months, dude. It's a she marine. It, it it's something. <laughs> it's, it's like I put it in a pony yesterday. I was walking around the house. My little girl, my ten year old, she's like, "My God, Daddy's got a ponytail," and I'm like, "Awesome." So that's what's going Hippie. on. I, I hope we help somebody out. I mean, we need to share this and get this information out, and maybe more people will show up. If they don't, it's okay. Did you uh, put it over on your main page that you were going to do this over here? No. You need to. No, he didn't. Yeah. Because that would get more people. Because I get asked tons of questions every week about thumbnails. Over and over and over again. About, well, I answered a ton of them today. I know you did. And I was yeah. typing away trying up, to help out. Yeah. yeah. Set up your um, set up the thumbnail for the one for next week so we can share it out soon. 
Yeah, I'll put up the SEO one. Um, yeah. And we'll we'll put that out and we'll share it and you know get people over here and Aaron and we'll have you come up, Sherry and the three of us come up here and we'll talk about SEOs. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. Matter of fact, if it's just four or five of us in here, I'll bring us all up and we can all just have a round table and talk about stuff. That's cool. Probably the best way of learning than me just sitting here to lecture everybody. We'll just well, do that and bring everybody up and then we can all just well, talk back and well, forth. Well, I liked Drew, sure. when you and I went through and did a deep dive on each channel. I thought that was just, oh. Because you started digging into my stuff, and I started digging into your stuff, and I think we learned oh, a lot helpful. from each other that day. Let's let's do week, Aaron. I don't mind doing that, man. You know, I'll even give you the log on the password to this channel, and we can just turn this into the like I told you that before, man. That I know, but this, just this we were going to do it that one night, and the riots hit, and then we never talked about it again. No, I know, I know. Well, you, I think it would be a great idea. You, so, I mean, I'm I'm willing to do all that and we can make this whole, like, or there's a way to even market this, isn't there? Like, I can give you full-on permissions to the channel, mm -hmm. right? And we can just do that. And then, because there's some people that, and I'm not trying, I'm not starting a war, but there's some <laughs> people that are saying, hey, we're, we're teaching this stuff. And I don't really know if they're, I don't know. I think me and you have a lot to offer. You you can only lead them to the water. You can't make them drink. Exactly. I think the two of us have a very, very good knowledge pool of what's going on and how to read the SEOs. And there's new stuff that YouTube is releasing. Like, um, they just talking about the, right. the timelines earlier. And I'm like, that's just a new function. I mean, it's been there since the um, creation of YouTube that they had the timelines in the, and you put them in your uh, description timestamp. section, the timestamp. And I used them all the time and nobody ever used them that I ever saw. Now they're actually tracking that. And I'm like, wait a minute. You go back to some of my earlier videos. It's all in there. And if you go back to some of my old live streams, when we were talking about this on Papa Drew, I said, look, man, they're going to start tracking timestamps. They absolutely are. They're, you're going to, those are just going to be like hashtags. If you don't put timestamps in, you're, 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 you're fighting with one arm behind your back because they will track that stuff. Oh, and they man. absolutely are. Now they are, but that was just recent. I mean, that was an update within the last week. And there's a new one that just came out that's coming out. It's in beta. So when your subscribers come on, they watch one of your videos, they're going to tell you where that subscriber goes after they've watched your video and what they just watch next. They've been doing that for a long time. I have they're never, just, that, that information's not in your, um, well, not for you, but YouTube has been doing it forever. They know yeah, it. YouTube, but they haven't given it to the creator. They're not sharing it with the creators. They're giving yeah. that to the creators, which is going to be a very huge tool because now you can see one, if, if, if a subscriber watches your content, let's say 50% of watch time, which is good. 50 to 60% of your video, right? That's pretty good. And then they move on to another video that's like yours, then you know to double down on that content. But if they move off to another type of video, consistently a bunch of different subscribers, consistently moving off to a different video, you know that your subscriber base might want to see that kind of material more than what you're putting out to them. If people that use that data, if they use the data. Some people they just make the same video and keep in the, getting in that rut, and they just keep they can't get out of it. They just keep doing the same thing over and over and over. I don't over want again. to do that. I get it, but I mean, if you're smart and you want to grow and you want this to to go somewhere, then you're going to either one adapt, overcome, and improvise, and listen to people that know what they're talking you're about, talking or you're, you're going to keep doing the same thing you are, and hopefully you'll grow. Yeah, I just because your mom, I didn't know. That's that's just what's going to happen. I know, and that's. But I'm just saying it. The numbers. <clears throat> but I think that's a very pop. Pow, that's a powerful tool YouTube's going to give us if they give us that. But phew, YouTube has changed so much since I got on it that wow. Sometimes it's just hard to keep up with the changes. Well, I, I think YouTube is completely pushing everybody in the wrong direction with subscribers. I, I, I really think that, that it should be views, but it's going to help YouTube. If it's views and watch time, that's how YouTube makes money. But views they got, and watch time. And that's you how you should be monetized or not. It should be right. views and watch time. 
that's why they add the subscribers to it because it's harder to get that than it is to get the views and the watch time. For some people, it's one way. Some people, it's the others. Yeah. If your content, if you're doing quality content, it should be There's easy to do both. April and Michael had to be asked. I mean, it's it's round and round. <laughs> All right. Well, we've been on for an hour and ten minutes, so you're going to be on next week, five o'clock West Coast. RV or five. I'll make the thumbnail this week. We'll put it out, and uh, you, I'll text it to you, Aaron, and okay. um, we'll talk about SDOs again. <clears throat> Sounds you know, good. How to do this? So, later, Drew. Yeah, I want to thank everybody for coming in. Thank you for watching, all three of us, and hopefully whoever decides to watch the rest of this and uh, hanging out and <clears throat> share it, like us. You'll know you'll find us funny. I love you, <laughs> and I'll see you next time. No, Bye. You'll find us funny. Bye. Bye. <laughs> you know you'll find it's funny stealing shit you I know, know you'll find it's funny <laughs>